to smell what the rock is cooking. 在那个年代里，我们就是居住在这个样子的政府祖屋里面。那个时代的新加坡人没有什么娱乐场所可以去，所以工作、上课之余，没事可做时，就是到附近的市场闲逛，在咖啡店里喝喝茶。看报纸，听收音机。大多数的人都会在家里看电视。受新加坡人欢迎的电视节目有各种语言的戏剧、华语新闻和歌唱节目。还有看了令人热血沸腾的美国摔跤节目。Toes, right to the midsection as Bruiser again lashes Dolly back into that buckle, and again takes him down in a flying mare, and then places upon him the chin lock, which has, to my knowledge, has never received a submission from any opponent. I do remember one time, though, and I think I've mentioned this before. There was a time when a hammerlock, I saw a hammerlock win a match, and uh, it came so quickly after a backdrop and a beal that I very, very much doubt whether there was anything involved in that hammerlock other than just a lot of pressure put on it on、uh, an already pinched muscle or a pinched nerve, because when this fellow had been taken down in the backdrop and picked up and beal. By that time, you could tell that he was somewhat contorted, and it was quite obvious there had been a ooh right into the buckle again. Quite obvious that there had been something pitched in his pinched in his arm.、And、the minute that hammerlock was put on, it was more than he could stand. Well, Bruiser being counted off here again, Dolly face first into that buckle, hangs on for dear life. Short chop to the chin. And、uh, a few fingernails right across the front of the face as Dolly comes out of the corner. This is a good match, an excellent match as he stands right up to the world's most dangerous flying head scissor. Dolly hangs on, gets a count of one, and that count of one is reversed by Bruiser, who very quickly rolls Dolly's shoulders down to the mat. The bruiser stretching his way out of this hole makes the break. 254, right on you when he gets up there. A toe to the midsection, and again, that one landing just above the heart. That one right in between the rib cages, and out of the ropes, through the ropes goes Danny Dolly. Good-looking fellow. And a heck of a fine wrestler. There's a short right. Came off those 21 and a half inch arms. This man is amazing. How big he is and how well proportioned and healthy he keeps that body of his. You don't count him out very often. Head first, two times to the buckle. Look at this. Over the ropes, down with a body slam.、And、Dolly, who has been slowed down considerably, could be beaten right now. 
as the brute goes to the ropes. The flying knee drop. Two and three. It's all over. The time, four minutes. 52 seconds. Just a moment, and we'll have it official. Four minutes, 52 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Four minutes, 52 seconds. Your winner from Reno, Nevada, the world's most dangerous wrestler, former world's heavyweight champion, Dick the Bruiser. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, with more championship wrestling in just a moment. You stick around and don't go away. Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, call to your attention our next match, which is in the ring, at least a portion thereof is in the ring. It is scheduled for one fall, 15 minutes. One fall, 15 minutes. Introducing this gargantuan, and a real giant he is, too, from Moosehead, Maine, at 310 pounds, the Golden Moose Cholak. Moose Cholak. Moosehead, Maine. His opponent is from Milan, Italy, making a long uh, absence, uh, returning to the ring after a long absence. Uh, he weighs in at 236 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Parenti. Tony Parenti. This is one fall or 15 minutes. There's Parenti. We haven't seen him for quite some time, as I indicated. Moose Cholak will be his opponent. And this could prove to be a very interesting and worthwhile match as Cholak, who takes every match, uh, every opponent he meets as a warm-up for the great one, he says, coming along when he's declared the champion. And uh, he will have to meet for a champion, of course, Gene Kaniski, but it makes no difference to him. Cholak says uh, whether it's Kaniski the champion, uh, whether it's Dick the Bruiser, or should he ever regain the championship, etc., 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 I am going to get it. And uh, <laughs> I think he, with an attitude like that, he very possibly might. One fall match, and uh, we're just about set. Here we go, there's the bell, and we're off. Parenti, much the smaller, but he's one of the wrestlers I like to refer to as the Gary Player of wrestling. He's small, but he packs a lot of dynamite, and he certainly knows how to come up with the moves and the winning combinations. There's a rollover, a front, front face drag, and a rollover by Cholak. There's a dive by Parenti, and we have a lot of good mat action here. A lot to start this match off. To an arm bar, and with a smaller man, the next move would be a step over. But Cholak makes the first quick step. And Parenti, underneath now, will have to find the way out. The splits. trying to give himself a chance to get Rodriguez untied. He's got him partially untied. But that doesn't stop Tyler from continuing his assault. Rodriguez paying him back. Rodriguez drives, ooh, Rodriguez walks right into that. Boy, when this Tyler looks like he's ready for the cleaners, that's when he's the most dangerous. Tyler 
setting him up and softening him up. Reaching through the ropes, grabbing. Rodriguez and bouncing his head right off that apron. Referee finally succeeding in chasing Tyler back. Tyler looming up there again. Gets up just long enough to be knocked back down again. Mouth stretcher by Tyler, and even though Rodriguez is tangled still in the ropes, he keeps it on until the referee almost reaches the disqualification count. Double Tyler up. And there, that did him a lot of good. That'll teach him some manners. And Rodriguez shows that he can use his foot too. And he's working on those leg muscles. Now he's using a knee. He chopped him down with a press. The tough Canadian rolls him off. Rodriguez trying to get his breath. is not going to give him any chance like that. Oh. There's the brain crusher. was very reluctant in raising Tyler's hand, but there wasn't much he could do about it. Here it is. The time, ladies and gentlemen, nine minutes and 15 seconds, and the winner, Tarzan Tyler. And still snarling, the ape man from Calgary, Canada, stalks out of the ring. And as you've heard, the winner of this match between Tarzan Tyler and Pedro Rodriguez is Tarzan Tyler. Once more, we're up in the center of the ring for the introduction by Sam Mason. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is one fall. Introducing in this corner, weighing 230 pounds, Tomas Marin. In this corner, weighing 264 from Butte, Montana, Smasher Sloan. Smasher 
Sloan removing his sweater and revealing those powerful arms that he is so proud to wave before the fans, and which I might add he very effectively uses to smash down the opposition. Well, I'm sure you wrestling fans around the country are anxious to hear about the extended tour of Bobby Davis that he has, according to his cablegram, successfully concluded. It reached all the way to the the very desolate areas of Mongolia. But he uh, left no stone unturned in an effort to come up with the strongest, biggest, greatest wrestler that he could find in an attempt to dethrone Bruno San Martino. Ooh, did you hear that? Man, Smasher Sloan whipped Marin to the mat. A crash that echoed and re-echoed throughout the arena. There he goes again. Tremendous shoulder drags. Boy, Sloan bounced, I mean, bounced Marin off that mat a couple of feet. Well, that wasn't exactly legitimate. And that's what Betty Blake is telling him. Uh, in addition, hadn't even gotten back into this country yet before he was advised that his boys, the Miller brothers, according to him, were taken advantage of. So he's going to have uh, quite a few things to talk about. I'm anxious to hear about this Mongolian giant he's bringing in, though. I'm sure you are, too. Three stunning hip locks, and Marin with a hip lock that crashes Sloan to the mat. Two, a wallop to the stomach, and another hip lock by Marin. And that more than even the score. And look at this. A frustrated Smasher Sloan. Taking his anger out on the ropes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Sam Menneker at ringside. We're ready to get underway with the first event. And here to introduce the principals is none other than Bob Beach. The official timekeeper, Harry Black. The referee assigned, Bill Beach. This match, one fall, ten-minute time limit. Introducing from the parts unknown, at 260 pounds, the Strangler. His opponent from Indianapolis, Indiana, at 231 pounds, Spike Huber. Excuse me, Scarlett. 
Okay, fans, we are ready to go. And uh, referee Bill Beach checking the rest of the spike, wearing a beautiful new jacket. Really beautiful jacket, all gold. And we notice that on his shoes, the emblem is a, a spike, like a railroad spike. It's the mask strangler in there against Huber. Huber, of course, is a much faster man, but the strangler is a very power, pow powerful wrestler. Strangler forces Huber back to the ropes. Spike beat him to the punch. Man, look at that Spike Huber. What a magnificent physique. We notice on the side of his trunks also applique, I guess you might say, or sewed on uh, railroad spikes because they're cloth. They're in the referee's hole. The strangler again forces him back. Hits him in the throat. They're in the rope. Spike comes right back with a punch. And he crashes the strangler into the tur turnbuckles. You know, fans, those turnbuckles are padded, but they're very, very rigid. A nice go behind by Spike Huber. The strangler tried to do the same thing, but Spike brings him over with the fireman's carry, has him on the mat. About a one and a half count, the Strangler struggles away. Spike staying right with him. Strangler reaches for Spike's leg. Drops him to the mat, but a kick away by Huber. Again, the Strangler hanging on, but Spike is away quickly to his feet. Man, this Spike Huber really moves fast. Again, the referee's hold. Arm and neck hold. Call the referee's hold. Overhand wrist lock by Huber, and again, Strangler forces him back to the ropes. And on the break, when the referee said break, Strangler punched him. Front headlock now. Spike in the corner, the strangler hanging on to him. It's a break. The referee calls for a break. Flying toe hold, leg drop by Huber. Drop the strangler to the mat. Spike hanging on to that leg. Bringing him up, bringing that leg up. Now he has the other one. He's going for that figure four leg lock. This is a modified form of the figure four leg lock. And the Strangler's in trouble. And Spike. Uh -oh. Spike, I believe, would have defeated him with that hole, but the Strangler went under those ropes. Drag, but there's a head scissors by Huber. Completely out wrestling the mask strangler. Huber punishing the strangler. They're under the rope, so that'll mean an automatic break. And on the break, and it's not a break as far as the strangler is concerned. He was uh, twisting Spike's legs, or leg, over that strand of rope. The strangler refusing to break it up.
Mike has the advantage now. He had both legs, but under the ropes, and of course, that's an automatic break. The powerful Spike Huber. Go behind by the Strangler. Spins around. Huber spins around behind him. Picks him up. Oh, man. What a body slam. What a body slam. What a devastating hole this is. I don't think anyone can break out of it. He's putting the pressure on. And there's the bell. The match is over and winning with a figure four leg lock is the great Spike Huber. Fans following these, these messages, another match on All-Star Championship Wrestling, so please stay tuned.